What's up guys, it's Ed from TechSource and welcome to my build guide of my $550 AMD gaming PC. If you happen to miss the gaming benchmark video, I'll have a link below along with all the parts I used for this build, but without wasting any more time, let's begin. Step 1. Take the motherboard out of the box along with the IO shield and one SATA cable per SSD or hard drive that you are installing. Take the CPU and cooler out of the box and press down on the lever on the motherboard to release the lock. Grab the CPU by its sides and locate the tiny triangle on one of the corners. You're going to have to match that triangle with the one on the motherboard. Once you figure that out, gently lower the CPU down and let it fall in place. It should sit flush inside the socket. If it doesn't, pull it back out and try it again, but do not move it around once it's in there, otherwise you can damage the pins. Once the CPU is inside the socket, lower the lever down and lock the CPU in place. Next up, grab the cooler which should look something like this. Now all Ryzen 5 CPUs come with their stock cooler and thermal paste is already applied. So go ahead and grab the thermal compound of your choice. Personally, I recommend the Arctic Silver and so do a lot of other PC enthusiasts. I'll drop a link below in case you guys want to check it out. Now there's a lot of methods you can use to apply paste. The most common is the P dot method where you can leave a small dot of paste right in the center. But recently I've been doing the spreading method where I basically spread the paste evenly across the surface of the CPU. I do this to make sure it covers most of the area. Now you won't find significant differences in temps between these methods, I just do it this way for OCD reasons. So once you're done putting the paste on the CPU, we're gonna have to remove the two mounting brackets. So grab the screwdriver and remove all four of the screws. Once both of the plastic mounting brackets are off, grab your CPU cooler and make sure the cable is going to be in reach of the CPU header on the motherboard. Gently lower the cooler down and screw it in place using a crisscross pattern. Don't tighten one side all the way guys. Take your time and screw them in lightly one by one until they are all fully tightened. Grab the cable coming out of the cooler and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard which should be directly above it. Uh, next up it's time to do the RAM sticks. Now if you're installing two RAM sticks, then put them in slots A1 and B1. If you're only putting on one stick, then just put it in slot A1 only. So go ahead and remove the locks and gently lower the sticks evenly using both of your hands until both sides snap in place. Don't be afraid to apply some pressure, some of these are a bit stubborn. Now it's time to install the IO shield, so rip that plastic off and make sure that three of the circles on the IO shield are facing down towards the bottom of the case. And from inside the case, snap it in the cutout near the back. This is actually the hardest part of the build, believe it or not, so you might need some extra strength and patience to get this done. Make sure it snaps in place and that it sits flush with the case. You guys should hear a few clicks. We do need some extra standoff screws before we put in the motherboard, so grab four of these screws shown here and install them in these exact locations inside the case. Once the standoff screws are installed, gently lower the motherboard down and make sure to align the rear ports with the cutouts of the IO shield. Once the motherboard sits flat on all the standoff screws, it's time to tighten them up and once again, make sure to use a crisscross pattern. Now it's time to install the PSU. So look inside the box and you should find four of these screws that come with your power supply because we're gonna need them. With the fan facing down, gently lower the power supply in the back of the case and secure it in place using those four screws. Now let's install the storage. You're gonna need four of these screws. If you're using a hard drive with your build just like me, you're gonna have to slide it vertically in this cage until the holes align with the cutouts. Once they align, you can continue to screw the hard drive in place. Two screws in the front and two more on the back side. Now if you're installing an SSD, you only get one spot and it's actually in the back of the case. Let's hook up the hard drive. So grab the SATA power cable that looks something like this and hook it up to the back of the hard drive. If you're using an SSD, hook it up in the back of the SSD. The connections are the same. Next, grab the SATA data cable that we got from the motherboard box and hook up one end to the hard drive and the other end to one of the SATA ports on the motherboard. It should be located just under the RAM sticks to the right side. Again, this process is exactly the same for an SSD. Since we are connecting things, let's connect the rest of the cables. First up are these tiny connectors for the front panel of the case. 
grab the one that says reset SW and insert it in the bottom two pins, pin number three and pin number four on the bottom row. Next one is HDD LED. Now with the words facing down, connect this one to pin number one and pin number two on the same row. Power LED plus goes in pin number one and LED minus goes into pin number two on the top. And finally, the power SW goes in pins number three and pin number four on the top, right next to the cables we just plugged in. For this one, it doesn't matter which direction you plug it in. The cable with the blue tip is for the USB 3.0 port in the front, and that connects to the port that says USB 3 on the motherboard, which is right above the SATA ports. The cable that says HD audio goes into the pins labeled HD audio, which is in the far left side of the motherboard near the bottom. The cable that says USB goes in the pins that says you guessed it, USB, which is to the right of the HD audio port we just plugged in. The huge 24 pin cable is needed to power the motherboard and that obviously goes into the 24 pin socket on the motherboard. And finally, the two four pin connectors labeled CPU are needed to power the CPU socket and these plug into the ports on the top left of the motherboard. So at this time, your PC should look something like this. We can take this time to work on cable management now that you know where everything connects to. Feel free to disconnect all the wires and route them any way you like. Once you are done with the cable management, it's time to plug in the GPU. So remove the two screws from the back that's holding the PCIe brackets together and peel off the two metal brackets by bending them back and forward until they come off. Grab the GPU with the fan facing down and slide it into the first PCI slot until you hear it snap. Screw back the PCI bracket cover in the back and grab the cable that says PCIe and plug it in the GPU. So congratulations, you've built your very own gaming PC but we are not done yet because we do need to install the drivers and overclock the PC. So go ahead and grab a USB drive with at least 8 gigs of space and plug it into a working computer. We're gonna have to download and install the operating system files onto the USB, so if you're installing Windows 10, click on the Windows 10 link below, and if you're doing Windows 8.1, click on that link instead. I'll be dropping links to all the sites that I talk about down below. Once the media tool is downloaded, open it up and follow the instructions. It's very simple. On the first page, click on the second option that says create installation media, then click next again and make sure that the USB flash drive option is selected. Then go ahead and select the USB drive that we are installing the files to and it will start to download the files. Make sure you don't have any important files on it because it will erase everything off of it. So once it's done installing the files, we're gonna have to plug this into the PC we just built and boot it up. As soon as you hit the power button on the PC, repeatedly hit the F11 button on the keyboard until the boot menu pops up and from here, we're gonna have to select the USB drive. After that, the PC will boot from the drive and it will begin installing Windows, but first up, you will need to enter the CD key in. I usually get my CD keys from Reddit because they are super cheap, but you can buy them from wherever you want. Just make sure you're actually buying the correct version of Windows that you installed on your USB drive. After entering the CD key, it will take you to this window. Over here, make sure to select the correct Windows version that you bought, otherwise the CD key won't work. After you hit next and accept the terms, it will ask you where you want to install Windows. We're gonna click on custom and obviously pick the drive that you want to install onto. In my case, it's the one terabyte drive. So click next and it will begin installing the files. Now, if you have files on your drive and want to format it, you can actually select the drive and click on format and then click OK. Once it's done formatting, you can see that we have one terabyte of space once again. Then you can click on the drive again and hit next and it will install a fresh copy of Windows on it. Everything else is self-explanatory. Just follow the instructions on the screen until it takes you to the desktop. And once you are here, you will need to install the drivers. If you don't have internet access on this PC, use a computer that does and download the following drivers for your PC. Once again, I'll drop a link to it below. From the motherboard website, we need to install the following. Realtek High Definition Audio and Realtek LAN Driver. The rest of the stuff is optional. Once you install these and restart the PC, you should have internet access once you hook up your PC to your router, and then we can install the graphics driver. So visit the AMD website and click on the download link for the automatically detect and install your driver. Once again, the link is below. Once it's done installing and you restart your PC, you are basically done. 
If you don't want to overclock your PC, then this is the end of the tutorial. But if you want to overclock your CPU to gain more performance, then this is what you have to do. Restart your PC and click on the delete button on the keyboard so that it takes you to the BIOS screen. Move over to the OC tweaker tab and make sure the CPU frequency and voltage change is set to manual. This is where it gets fun. Now there are some people that can push their R5 1400 to 4.0 GHz. However, mine doesn't get that high, so I left it at 3.9 at 1.3875 volts. So I recommend you to copy these settings that you see on the screen for the frequency and the voltage, and then you can hit F10 on your keyboard to save the changes and then boot to the desktop. I recommend running IDA64 for about an hour to see if your PC is stable. Now it is a free program and you can download it from their website or you can click on the link below. Once you've downloaded and opened up the program, click on the little graph icon up top and click on start. Let it run for about an hour and if your PC doesn't crash, that means it's stable. I would also check the temperatures to make sure it's not getting too hot. Uh, honestly, anything over 85 degrees is considered a bit too hot. If your PC is stable and doesn't crash, I would bump it up to 4.0 gigahertz and rerun the test. If it crashes, go back and up the voltage, then rerun the test. Rinse and repeat until the PC is stable at 4.0 GHz if you can get it there. Whatever you guys do, do not increase the voltage past 1.45 volts. It can damage the CPU over time. If for some reason it's crashing at 3.9, lower it to 3.8 and adjust the voltage accordingly. Once you find a stable clock and voltage, you can actually enable XMP and mess with RAM overclocking, but I kept that at the default since it doesn't really make a huge difference. But anyways, that does it for the video. If you guys enjoyed my build guide and it helped you guys out, tossing a like would be really awesome as it takes a very long time to set up these types of videos. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comment section below because I'm sure my fellow subscribers will help you out. I'll also answer a few questions here and there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.